Testing one, two, three. Okay, we are 
practicing our safety measures here on campus, but I'm going to remove my face mask uh, briefly just so you can see my ugly mug here and you can hear me a little bit better. Uh, hello everyone, welcome and thank you for allowing us the opportunity to share our story. I'm Dr. David Schmidt, I'm an Associate Professor of Geology and Environmental Science at Westminster College. I teach geoscience courses to support the environmental science program here at the college. Within this program, I teach and research various aspects of paleontology, and during the summer, I lead field trips to South Dakota and Nebraska to collect fossil specimens that we use for teaching specimens and to conduct undergraduate research. For the most part, every summer has been pretty successful, and we have uh, been fairly productive as far as field seasons go. But this summer was uh, a little different from the normal field season, and it was uh, very special. This summer was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that involved the excavation of a dinosaur we call Shady. Shady is a triceratops, um, that consists of well-preserved fossilized parts of the skeleton, including a very large skull. Today, a student and member of our field crew is going to talk about their experience uh, in the field this summer and what it was like to excavate Shady. She'll be able to share details uh, about what we found and give students perspective of what uh, students' perspective of what the field experience was like. But before I introduce our speaker today, I want to thank several folks for their involvement in the efforts to bring Shady here to Westminster's campus. First, I thank Westminster College for all their enthusiasm and support. The United States Forest Service for their guidance and granting the permit which allows us to collect fossil specimens. The community or the members of the Shade Hill community in South Dakota for all of their assistance and support throughout the summer. I also thank my family for their patience and understanding. Being gone for uh, months at a time during the summer is not easy, but I appreciate you working that out with me. I also thank the current and former students of Westminster College who have supported us over the years, especially those that have assisted us in the field. You are all part of our paleo tribe and family for life, so thank you so much. I give uh, a special thanks to this summer's field crew that includes the current Westminster students Colette Fiella, Sophia, Sophia Hessenkamper, and Tim Burridge, and former Westminster students Meredith Bolin, Mariah O'Brien, and Heather Martin. I also thank Garrett Williamson, a former student from a previous institution where I once taught. I was really fortunate to work with this group of people. They were an amazing field crew to work with. They were hardworking and very dedicated individuals that helped me live out uh, my dream, and it's one that I will never forget. So thank you very much. You all rock, but you all know that. Um, I also, uh, lastly, I'd like to thank our student-led organization, Search and Discovery, Sarah Backer, our media strategist here at Westminster College, and our IT department uh, for putting this event together. So now I'd like to introduce our uh, one of those crew members from this summer and today's presenter, our very own environmental science major, geology minor, and president of our student-led organization, Search and Discovery, Colette Fiala. Hi, my name is Colette Fiala, and I'll be conducting this presentation today. Our trip started out at Shade Hill Recreation Area in South Dakota, where we went tent camping for a total of two months while we were in the field. We were 15 miles south of the small town of Lemon. We visited the town often and went to some of the landmarks, such as the Grand River Museum, the Petrified Wood Park and Museum, the Revenant Hugh Glass Monument, and the Kokomo Gallery Studio of John Lopez, who is a local sculptor who has done many works nationally and internationally, including sculpting 12 of the presidents of the Cities of Presidents Project in Rapid City, South Dakota. We got to see much of the grasslands, mingle with the locals, and even get a boat ride to explore the Shade Hill Reservoir and lake next to the campsite. Our dig site was located on Grand River National Grasslands, which is federal land. This area is part of the Hell Creek Formation, which spans the Upper Cretaceous to the Lower Paleocene. The Cretaceous era was approximately 144 to 66 million years ago. 
This era ended with a mass extinction event, including the extinction of the dinosaurs. This is the mass extinction that poses the famous debate, asteroid or volcano? We were not the first to discover something amazing in the badlands of South Dakota. This area has been prospected for decades and has yielded several dinosaur fossils. Sue the T-Rex was found not far from our site in Shade Hill. In the process to obtain the site, the site was discovered in March of 2019 by an individual repairing a fence in a pasture and noticed bones fragments eroding out of the slope. It was then reported to the Forest Service and we obtained the permit to excavate and collect. We began excavation in June of 2020. We initially had a field course scheduled for the summer, which was canceled due to COVID. The students wanted to have a travel experience and asked if it would be okay if we volunteered for the excavation. Both current and former students volunteered. The bones had been found and we jumped into action as soon as we entered the site. But before digging, we had the task of collecting float, which is broken bone at the surface. We had to clear vegetation and mark locations, collecting useful data to help in future research. The tools we were using to excavate were survey rods, measuring tape, automated eye leveler, brushes, picks, shovels, rock hammers, and paleo picks. While digging, we were not only moving dirt, but also heavy concretions or iron conglomerations from above and around the bone. We were using picks and brushes to move dirt and probe for bone. As bones were being uncovered, more bones were being found. And at this point, we had no idea what we were uncovering, but we knew it was big. While digging, we had to be able to distinguish bone from rock, which wasn't always easy. The ground in the area is mostly clays, mudstones, and sandstones. The process we used in removing bone from ground was pedestaling and plaster jacketing. We would pedestal the bone, removing excess matrix from around or under the bone until it was set on a rocky base. We then wrapped the bone and surrounding matrix in tin foil, then burlap strips were cut and dipped in plaster of Paris. We then placed plaster strips and foil and let it harden. We would repeat this process until we felt the bone was stable enough to flip. Carefully, not to harm the bone or the jacket, we would cut through the pedestal and roll the bone onto the hardened plaster. Then we remove the XX matrix from the pedestaled side and repeat the plastering process. When the jacket was fully dried, we had then the task of moving the bones from the site to the vehicle. The bones were then stored away in safekeeping until we could get them back to Missouri. Our parties involved, our crew for the trip, we have Dr. David Schmidt. He is the environmental science professor and the trip organizer. He's also the head paleontologist on this trip. Garrett Williamson, second in command paleontologist and a student of Dr. Schmidt's at, from Wayland Baptist. Meredith Bolin, who's a Westminster alum who's currently a teacher in Houston, Texas. Heather Martin, who is a Westminster alum currently working for the Missouri Department of Natural Resources. Mariah O'Brien, another Westminster alum currently working for the, Westmin for the Missouri Department of Natural Resources. Our current students, Sophia Hessenkemper, myself, Timothy Burridge, and then our trip dogs, Tina, Carly, and Tiger. In the pictures, we have our July and June crews next to our skull. We have David and Tina, one of our trip dogs, and then the first round of crew for the first two weeks in South Dakota. Then we have Sophia Hessenkemper and Timothy Burridge digging up bones, and then we have the Jul June crew next to the skull. Here we have our July crew also digging up bones, and then our Professor David laying next to the scapula. And then the next pictures we have David and then David's wife who came to help support. So who is Shady? Shady is a Triceratops prosis, a ceratopsin dinosaur from the late Cretaceous era. They were giant herbivores which weighed about 12,000 pounds and were 30 feet in length. They had strong legs and moved around on three toes on each front limb and four on the back limbs. Their heads were adorned with two brow horns and a smaller nose horn and a large frill to cover its neck. The head accounted for one third of the entire body length. They also had 800 teeth with replenishing groups called batteries containing 36 to 40 teeth. So what did Shady's environment look like? This era is post Pangaea breakup. The interior sea covers Central and Northern America. Very swampy and southern, very swampy and forested terrain. 
The Ceratopsian was discovered and named in 1890 by O.C. Marsh. They're native to the United States and what is now the Badlands and the Grasslands. Funding and getting Shady home. All of the funding we have gotten for Shady has been donations or out of pocket by our professor, so currently we are raising funds. The local people in Shade Hill were very excited about our discovery and volunteered to help us. They became essential to getting the skull out of the ground and back to Missouri. When the first round of digging was done, our professor rented a U-Haul to get the bones back. To get the skull back in July, Dr. Schmidt drove a trailer to bring it back to Missouri. Now where do we go from here? Our next goal is to get a prep room put into next to the geology lab so we can start prepping the bones and beginning our research to eventually display Shady. What we gain from Shady. The scientific community gains new information from every new dinosaur discovered. It offers an opportunity to learn more information about these ancient beasts. These bones alone contain lots of details that are worth investigating. An odd bone growth on the ribs, was it healing from an injury or was it bone disease? Potential bite marks on the frill, was it scavenging or was this how it died? The fossil carbonized organics concentrated around the bone may provide clues about environmental conditions and more may be discovered as we continue our research. It's quite rare to find the amount and types of fossils material that we did, so what we find from this dinosaur is contributing more data to what we know about these amazing creatures. What the students gain. We gain research and being able to have hands-on experience with these bones. I am currently working on a research project that entails making a bone map to scale of the site. This will help us see the orientation and position the Triceratops died, giving us more information around time and place of death. This opportunity not only helps me further my understanding of Shady and our excavation, but also offers me opportunities to further my education in the field of geosciences. There are still bones at the site where we found the other bones, and so there is potential for a full skeleton. We currently only have a partial skeleton with a total of 23 bones plus two turtles, and on the slides here you can see our two turtles. We plan on going back to the dig site next summer to take a next crew and find the rest of Shady. Now we have some personal statements from people who could not be here, but were also on the excavation. Meredith Bolin, class of 16, Alpha Gamma Delta. 2012 was the year I graduated high school and first truly joined the Westminster community. I am so grateful for the four years, countless experiences, and every single one of my professors. Westminster for me was a place that I was able to continue learning and growing in a supportive community. It was a direct result of my time at Westminster, but I was able to develop my future plans, solidify my personal and professional goals, and continue investing myself in multiple content areas that I was interested in. At Westminster, I quadruple majored in elementary education, middle school education, secondary education, and history. In addition to my courses, I was able to carry out an independent study of geoscience under the supervision of Dr. David Schmidt. After teaching for two years in Ramwamagana Leaders School in Rwanda, I then traveled to Massachusetts to carry out my Master's of Education at Harvard University. I was able to study specialized studies focusing on the policy and technology barriers in the classroom. It was January 2020 during my spring semester when I received a call from Dr. David Schmidt asking me to join another exciting expedition in South Dakota and Nebraska researching fossils. I was so honored to travel back to the Badlands to continue digging and learning that I said yes. I am so grateful for the education I received from Dr. Schmidt and the education he continues to give every student at Westminster College. This summer, I was extraordinarily lucky to have the opportunity to uncover Shady with Dr. Schmidt, Colette, Garrett, Tim, Sophia, Heather, and Mariah. South Dakota and Nebraska are filled with buried stories waiting to be dug up and shared with the world. To me, paleontology is about continuing the spread of knowledge of those stories and helping other find ways to discover more about the past. I cannot accurately describe what an ex incredible experience it was to lightly sift away the matrix surrounding the Triceratops teeth or to travel across the state from museum to museum to compare our findings as a group. Shady to me, means the chance to continue spreading the education of the past for many years to come. Timothy Burridge, current student.
My experience of working on a dinosaur excavation site has been thoroughly rewarding and educational. The opportunity to be a part of an excavation allowed me to apply my knowledge I acquired in the classroom out in the physical environment. In addition, this excavation has helped challenge and develop my own understanding of our physical environment by doing hands-on work in excavation. I cannot thank Dr. Schmidt enough for giving me the opportunity to take part in this excavation. If I was given the opportunity to take part in this excavation again, I would be honored to join. To anyone who is wondering if they should go, I say go for it. You'll never know if an opportunity like this will come again. Sophia Hessenkemper, current student. Going on this trip to dig up dinosaur bones was eye-opening. I never thought really hard about dinosaurs because I had never seen one outside of picture books. But looking so close and being right there to be able to physically touch and help remove real 66 million year old bones from the ground, it was amazing to see and think about. I would go back and do it again for the experience, company and camping and being outdoors. Plus the dogs made it pretty fun. Now here we have pictures from the trip. On the left, you can see vertebrae one at the surface and then vertebrae one after it's uncovering. Next, we have the ilium exposed at the surface, and then on the right, we have the fully exposed ilium. Next, we have the horn core, which is part of the skull at the surface, and then we have the exposed nose horn attached to the skull. Next, you can see the partially exposed frill that was detached from the rest of the skull. And then on the right, you can see more exposed frill. In this next picture, you can see the exposed nose horn and more exposed nose horn attached to the skull. Here again, you can see more exposed brow horn and ribs one through two being dug up. Next you see ribs one through three in their laying pattern in the ground, and then you see Meredith and Tim digging up ribs one and two. Next, on the left, we have the exposed ilium next to the exposed ribs, and on the right, we have the partially exposed skull. Here we have on the left, vertebrae and ribs exposed. And then on the right, we have exposed lower jaw and scapula. Next, we have our July crew, Garrett, Heather, and Mariah, around ribs and the scapula. And then on the right, we have the plaster jacketed skull and ribs. Next, we have Meredith and myself working on ribs, and then we have Garrett working on the ilium. Next, we have an up-close view of one of the vertebrae. Next, we have rib four, and then the full-size uncovered scapula bone. Next, we have David's wife next to the scapular bone and then myself next to the frill. To scale, I'm about 5'3". Next, we have the dig site and set up camp from where we dug up the bones and spent our entire day out in the sun. <laughs> next, we have Dr. David Schmidt and Meredith next to the ilium and ribs. And then on the right, we have a close-up of tailbones. Next, we have our June crew, myself, Meredith, and Garrett, working on excavating the skull. And then on the right, we have the skull ex excavated from the point of view of the horns.
And lastly, we have a picture of the skull uncovered. Now is the time we will start taking questions. So the question was if there was anything for paleontology that they can get involved with in the community or in college. Um, so for our club, Search and Discovery, we offer opportunities not only like this to go out into the dig sites, um, but we also offer other opportunities that are more local. Um, to get into paleontology, you really just have to have an interest in dinosaurs. <laughs> but um, if that is something that you are looking forward to, then usually the environmental science departments have paleontology courses and our professor David loves teaching about dinosaurs because he loves them as well. So. We got another question here. Has the experience influenced your plans after graduation? The question was, have the, has the experience influenced my plans for after graduation? Uh, they have not influenced my plans as much as I thought they would. Um, they have encouraged me, though, to continue my research and continue trying to be better and do more to achieve higher later on when I do go to continue my geoscience research. Okay, I have a question from Senator Brown. I know you said this earlier, sorry I missed it. How old is Shady? The question was, how old is Shady? Shady is about 66 to 65 million years old. So very old. <laughs> so I, I know you covered this earlier too. So what what is the time frame to go back out and discover the rest of? The question was, what is the time frame to discover the rest of Shady? We are planning to go back next summer, about the same time frame, usually June through July, because that's when the best time of the year to go excavating. It's not super cold, it's usually dry, and it's very easy for us to get out into the field. So we are planning to go out next summer. How did you personally get interested in this field of The question was, how did I personally get into this? Um, I actually have no real inclination towards paleontology. Um, I didn't even know about the trip until Dr. Schmidt had brought it up to me. Uh, but I am interested in the geosciences and whatever I can gain from any experience that I get was something worth my time to me. So I got involved in this because of Dr. Schmidt um, and felt that I needed to put time and effort into this to continue my research. Can you So the question was, what was our reaction to when we discovered that Shady was what it is? Um, very emotional. We, for the first part of the trip, thought that the skull itself was actually a pelvic bone. So we had no real idea that we would find the skull. We were planning it being somewhere completely different. We had no idea. So when we found the teeth and confirmed that it was a skull, we were ecstatic and I honestly am still wrapping my mind around it uh, because it's just one of those things that is a once in a lifetime opportunity and find uh, that really can't be explained. <laughs> Uh, so the question was, dinosaurs are found in this area quite a bit. Was it have something to do with the environment? Um, I'm actually going to pass this question off to David because he has the PhD in dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, so 66 million years ago, the landscape was quite a bit different looking than what it is today. Um, there were portions of land that were surrounded by bodies of water that um, you know, now are exposed at the surface as, as land, but were once underwater. So these were isolated uh, 
parts of the continent that were not submerged underwater, and they kind of they kind of populated this area during this time. Uh, so how much of Shady was found? I'm not exactly sure on percentage because I'm not exactly sure how many bones of Triceratops. About 20%. David says about 20% of the dinosaurs. We found about 23 bones. Yes, so the question was, do we anticipate more bones? We do. There were bones that were found at the dig site that we could not return just because near the end of the digging season and just room and funding. But we know that there are still bones out there, and we plan on going to find the rest of them. Um, I am not 100% sure. The question was um, how much of this kind of dinosaur has been found. Uh, I'm going to direct this as well to David to answer this question. So there have been about 50-some-plus uh, skulls of triceratops that have been found. Um, you know, all of these are not fully complete. Most of these are, are partial skulls. Uh, but ours is is fairly complete, and uh, the other thing is it's pretty large. So I think ours ranks up there as, as a fairly significant find uh, compared to the other Triceratops specimens that are out there. Awesome. Hey, Dr. Cinnamon Brown, another question. When you go back, how will you know you have found the rest of Shady, and is there a way to verify that other parts belong to him and not another dinosaur? Yeah, those are great questions. Um, you know, once. As we continue to remove a lot of the sediment, we, we are, we're finding bones that are basically just overlapping other bones that are, that are in place there. And once we get to a point where we start running out of bone material that's, that's, um, that's uncovered, um, you know, we have to kind of get to a point where we're, we say to ourselves, how much more are we going to continue to remove? Um, but we're hoping that, um, and, and the good thing is, as we were finishing up the field season, we saw such a high concentration that we feel like we're going to have quite a bit of the individual there. And uh, the way that we can kind of verify that it is one individual is when we start to see replicas or, or, or duplicates of other, uh, of specific types of bones. For example, if there's more than one right femur, then you, you obviously have at least two, two individuals, if not more, uh, depending on how many are found. So that's how we kind of use that. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for being on this live stream with us and let us share this information about Shady with you. Thank you very much.